Hello, I'm Ethan and I'm in charge of modification in Savory Man's Gunplay Production Department. Now here is the product we will be introducing this time. SD Gundam Cross Silhouette F... SD Gundam user Ayami Nissan is said to have ridden it before. It's finally been made into a movie and it's commercialized as part of the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette series. The price is 1980 yen. Actually, it's been a long time since I've touched an Ethan SD Gundam, so to be honest, I don't know much about the current SD situation. Yes, but do you know Wakamaru and Wakimaru who bought a lot of the SD Gundam Mushamalden series about 20 years ago? Well, I'm gonna do a time slip review based on those fading memories from 20 years ago. So let's take a look at what's inside. It was leaked by Ayame Nissan's Psycho-san fans. Aircraft open 1, 2 instructions. 5 total runners, all materials. It looks like polystyrene. The white runner is SD cloth. The runner color common to the silhouette series is grayish. It's kind of like the white part. The purple parts. New construction on F917 floor. The runner is a little too flashy with the sides slightly restrained. It's not purple and it has clear parts. Color plastic runner clear parts are very transparent. The gold parts are high quality and beautiful. It's very yellowish, very glossy. It was a strong gloss injection molding. I also feel like there are parts that don't look like plastic. Well for now let's move on to the next one. There are quite a lot of stickers and the gold part. It has a shape that almost compensates for it with a sticker. The second sticker is a selection formula. It feels like an old fashioned SD, right? It must be tough for the person painting this, right? The best part is the instruction manual. Color pages are used extensively. Well, there are some that have fewer pages. Probably not, but I thought it was really easy to see. Let's start by assembling the chest. I realized this after cutting this. The gate is really close to the parts. By doing this, the gate marks will be clean. They say it saves you the trouble of cutting twice. This is a very nice specification. First of all, the chest. Insert a cross silhouette frame into the parts. Squeeze it firmly and insert it with the grey parts. In addition, we will also attach the chest cover parts. While I was assembling it, I didn't think so. I have this gunplay chest, right? I mean, it's not just gunplay anymore. It also has the elements of Bipra. It's no exaggeration to say that, everyone. The good news is that the latest SD Gundam is an element of Vipla. It turns out that he has. However, we were having a hard time procuring Vipla. How do you like F9HK? Then, purple armor and gold parts. Insert and cover the chest parts and top. Assemble the beam muffler parts from the muffler. Attach the parts that are waving. Yes, with that the chest of gold is completed. The decorations are also clearly color coded. It's really worth seeing on the side. The seams are straight, right? My older sister's trademark beam muffler is flexible. The joints in the neck are up and down. Swing. The base of the arm also swings slightly back and forth. I'll do it. One boo is assembled with the SD frame and the cross silhouette frame. The procedure will change. First, we will focus on the SD. I would like to start assembling it. We'll sandwich the SD frame parts with the exterior parts. Let's proceed to the shoulder joint parts. The shoulder armor is placed here using a ball joint. We also use a ball joint to attach the wrist here. Firstly, the arms of the SD silhouette are completed. All the gold decorations here are stickers. It's shaped in a way that you can store it. There is a straight line in the middle of the arm. The base of the shoulder is a ball joint. You can also swing and twist it. It appears that my wrist can move quite flexibly. Also, it's a ball joint, so it can rotate and swing. By the way, this is the only wrist included. The weapon handle is only this type and only this part. It doubles as a replacement, reducing the trouble of changing it. I don't have one, but I would like to have at least a clenched fist. When assembling with a strong cross silhouette frame, the first part to be inserted is on this movable shaft. There are changes to specific parts. Yes, the cross silhouette. When you assemble it, it looks like this. There is a joint in the elbow. My arms get longer as a result in the SD. Unlike a frame, you can bend your elbows. It's looking like this. I'm posing like this. The width varies, personally. Would you really like to use a cross silhouette frame? Also, there is a large hole on the inside. This also uses the SD frame and the CS frame. 
the parts used will change. First of all, the SD. Here too, the basic flow of the frame is the arms and it's the same. Cover the frame with the exterior. Let's assemble it in a similar shape. When you put them together, it looks like this. The gold part of the getter. The mesh-like parts of the calves are color-coded. It's just purple armored gold. The gray areas are color-coded. There is no seam or anything like that. On the back of the joint and on the back of the clogs, there is a cutout hole that operates on the ankle, operates flexibly with the chisel and ball joint. Then when I used the CS frame, my legs became more solid. They have grown longer and an additional axis of operation has been added. Yes, when assembled with the CS frame, it looks like the exterior parts are exactly the same, but the impression is quite different, right? And of the knees. A moving axis has been added to the part. My waist is also in the SD frame and the CS frame. The shape is different, the CS frame is on the lower side. There is a joint shaft attached to the joint, so there is a slight. The image is like stretching your legs, the rest is. Assemble the exterior here and the hinge is completed. The rear skirt and side skirts were integrally molded with four. It was really easy to assemble because it was assembled from the parts. The front skirt is also one part molded and works especially well. No, let's start with this face part. Cover the parts with the eye stickers attached. This is the backside for the gimmick that will be introduced later. It also has a face on the back by the way. There is no distinction between the front and back parts of the eye. And like this, the front and back of the eyes, you can also change the facial expressions. Put on a helmet shaped part and add another helmet. Attach the parts, and yes, the face parts are finished. Only the eye parts and sensor parts are sealed. I'm putting clear parts and gloss. The golden color gives it a very glamorous impression. There is a slight difference between individuals. No, but the parts of the helmet are quite loose. This is how it looks when you look at the back of a ponytail with clear parts. It's quite cute, isn't it? The ponytail is connected to a ball joint. It moves quite flexibly with the helmet. When removed, it looks like the familiar infantry from SD Gundam. It will become a face part. Put it properly on your forehead. It has the word stone on it. I can't confirm that this is an anime, so that was a bit of a surprise. The center of the helmet and the head. There is a quite noticeable seam on the side of the... Now all you have to do is install each part. After installing the various weapons, the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette F91 model is complete. The characteristic of the SD series is its compact silhouette. Elements reminiscent of 9-1 are prominent throughout, such as the purple-based colouring, the mesh details and the muffler, making it easy to associate them with a twill pattern. Clear parts and gold parts are scattered all over the body, giving it a very attractive appearance. Of course, the base is the Gundam F91, so there are elements reminiscent of the F91, such as the chest and leg armour, and the shape of the backpack. And when you turn it into a cross silhouette frame, it looks like this. The head and body ratio is zero. I'm about five heads taller, giving me a more stylish look. By the way, the animated version looks like a CS frame. As the number of movable axes increases, the range of poses also increases. No, the impression changes so much when the limbs are extended. It will be a good reference for adjusting proportions. As for the color coding, most of the gold parts in the completed sample will be supplemented with stickers. However, that alone does not mean that it is perfect. The fine grey areas require painting. By the way, for the E3, I recommend painting with Gundam markers or something like that for a more natural finish. And this huge thing that's attached to my backpack. Isn't the name great? By changing the handle like this, you can switch to Beth Bar mode. In addition, you can attach the included beam effect to the handle of the handle making it an equipment that does not have a built-in beam. Although it is simple, it is a good weapon with a wide range of play. Also included is a ninja sword inherited from RX-00. You can insert it into your waist and mount it like this. And attached to this arm is a beam shield major sword. This can also be turned into a shuriken shaped beam shield using the included effects. And the F91 has its original plastic model form. By removing the armor of each part and replacing the ribbon on the head, you can create a light armor specification like this. It looks like an off-shot shot, and personally I quite like it. Furthermore, by removing the beam muffler and attaching the included gym head, you can create a figure that looks like this. What can I say? The pressure on my face is amazing. Finally, flip this face part over, attach the helmet and attach the effect parts to the shoulders as well. And it will be in maximum operation mode like this. PC.
seems a bit like a villain. The details of this face mask and the three fin-shaped parts made the F-91's costume even stronger. It looks like you can attach the Knight Gundam's cloak using the included joint parts. Also I don't have an Ethan kit so I'll just introduce it with photos but by combining it with other SD-53 series kits you can recreate Ayame's ninja technique and scramble technique from the movie. I think that being able to enjoy rearranging things like this is one of the old-fashioned charms. So, how was the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette F91? Well, it's been a while since I touched an SD Gundam, but the appeal of it is that it's extremely easy to assemble. Furthermore, it is a product that tickles the hearts of collectors as it has a wealth of highly expandable elements such as a cross silhouette frame in collaboration with other kits. Build Metaverse's aircraft are still being made into kits of my personal favourites, such as the Double O Diver Arc and Plutine Gundam, so I'm really looking forward to seeing them in the future. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. What, the next project? Well, I'm sure we can do something if we have one more month. Looking forward to it later.